And it is Denver Sports Tonight on this Wednesday night in the Mile High City. He is James Merrillat. I'm Will Peterson. We will roll with you for the next hour on a fairly busy news day in Broncos country. We deserved one of these because it had been kind of dull at the start of free agency. And I'm not saying what the Broncos did today in the free agent market or with their visits to Pro Days is setting the world on fire. It is at least something for us to go off of, James. Clues have been few and far between about this organization's plan. Let's start with signing wide receiver Josh Reynolds comes over from the Detroit Lions. Two-year deal worth up to $14 million being framed as a Jerry Judy replacement. 40 catches last year, a little more than 600 yards, five touchdowns. Your excitement level for Josh Reynolds to join Broncos country, James. Oh, I would put it at a five. Like, he, he's a fine player. He's he's all right. I mean, he's been around a while, been in the league seven years. I think he's got a little under 3,000 total yards in those seven years. What's he got, 29 touchdowns, which isn't terrible. Like, he's fine. He's a, he's a good addition. And, you know, when the Broncos played the Lions, man, that team had a ton of speed, and they gave Denver fits, and tapping into that at all – would be, you know, not necessarily a bad move, but was he one of the main guys that was giving the, the Broncos trouble? No, it was St. Brown and Gibbs and, uh, you know, Laporta gave other teams all sorts of fits. Like, they had a ton of weapons. He was like, what, I think he had the third most catches, but he was about the fourth or fifth option in their offense. So, he had two for 41 that night. Yeah, he's he's okay. He's all right. I mean, he's most known this season for being the guy – that had the big drops in the NFC title game that made Dan Campbell have to explain why he kept going for it on fourth down. Mm, mm. Uh, Listen, is he a good addition to the team? Yes. Is he going to all of a sudden make this offense just uh, dynamic? No, not at all. He's a piece and you got to have some pieces. Not everything has to be, uh, you know, if you're putting together a puzzle, not all of them are the corner piece. Sometimes you just find that kind of irregular one that goes in there and it, it fills a void. That's uh, that's how I kind of look at this. It's it's fine. You need it, but I don't think it's anything anybody should run out and buy a number eight uh, number eight jersey here. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the drops in the NFC title game, and you're right. The big story after that game was, oh, Dan Campbell is way too aggressive, and he cost the Lions a shot at the Super Bowl. And it was, well, this narrative would be a lot different if Josh Reynolds had come up with a couple of key fourth down passes. So that that's something. I mean, he played in the semifinals last year and did yep. not have his best night. At the same time, though, James, if I had asked you last night, are they done at wide receiver? I think we all would have said, yeah, that they have their wide receiver room. It's Sutton, Patrick Mims, and then the Brandon Johnsons, the little Jordan Humphreys, and maybe Philip Dorsett. So I actually applaud the Broncos that when this came across my timeline today from Adam Schefter, I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that. At least they did something. I mean, this is a bigger deal than the safety out of Miami, who we were all supposed to pretend we knew who we didn't because he actually didn't start games, or the D-tackle out of New Orleans, who we all were supposed to pretend we knew, but he didn't start games. Like, at least Josh Reynolds, I'm like, yeah, I know who that dude is, and he's a half-decent football player. Yeah. no, You know, something is better than nothing. You're not wrong about that, but – Look, is the receiver room better today than it was yesterday? Yes. Definitely. Is the receiver room better today than it was at the end of the regular season? That's debatable. You know, Jerry Judy's not a huge loss for the way he played in Denver. But, you know, this isn't a huge addition. I think it's probably a wash at best. Well, he had two and a half times the touchdowns of Judy. Judy had two lousy touchdowns. Reynolds had five. How many catches did Jerry have this year compared to? I don't know. How many drops did he have? Like, we could, we could play that <laughs> well, game all day. he didn't drop anything in the NFC title game. Yeah, because he was, he on, his, he was on his couch. That's game. why. Yeah. I, I just think let's not cherry pick the one stat that makes him look two and a half times better than Jerry Judy. He's not two and a half times better than Jerry Judy. It's just, it's a nice addition. If this team had stand, you know, stayed as they were, or even if they had traded Jerry Judy, right? But Russ was still here. They sign Josh Reynolds. They draw, draft Brock Bowers. I'd be like, okay, man, this is a team that could win 10, 11 games. Like, it, it, to me, this move kind of makes the point I've been making for two months of, like, what are you doing derailing this thing? Like, this would have been a nice addition to what they had. If this is a, a you know, cornerstone for what you're trying to do and what you're going to try to do a, supposedly with a rookie quarterback, okay. All right. I yeah, mean, but you, you went and got a, you went and got a guy that's the fourth or fifth best option on a, a good team. Okay, great. 
Well, Jerry had 54 for 7, 58, and two touchdowns. Reynolds had 40 for a little more than 600 and five touchdowns. Okay. So I, I, I actually think this is a wash. And frankly, James, Jerry Judy needed a change of scenery. His attitude stunk. He's picking fights with Steve Smith on national TV before a massive Thursday night game against the Chiefs. He's having bizarre pressers at his locker. He's fighting with people on Twitter all the time. Shannon Sharp, Rod Smith, our own Philip Lindsay. It, it, just, it just, to me, felt like... Shipping Jerry Judy out of town was sort of what you've harped on for a while now, that some of these guys were just a part of this losing culture Agreed. for so long, they had to go. So that's why I'm actually not saying it's a wash. I'm going to say Reynolds is an upgrade coming from a winning team, and you remove Judy from the room. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think Jerry Judy, to some extent, is addition by subtraction, right? So I, I don't have an issue with them trading him, and I do think this addition has a chance to essentially replace him. The stats are a little misleading, though, Will, when you look at the offenses they played in. Like, Jerry Judy was a far bigger percentage of the Broncos' passing game than Reynolds was of the Lions' passing game. The Lions threw the ball all over the place, and the scoreboard got lit up. Like, it's easier to put up better numbers or bigger numbers there. So as a percentage of the offense, it, 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 he he wasn't near what it was, but he also had to share the ball with a lot better talent, right? there. The Broncos didn't have a ton of options. If Jerry Judy would have caught footballs or you know got two feet inbound, two feet inbounds up in uh, or over in LA and, and had a touchdown, like his numbers would have looked a lot better. They were begging him to be the guy. Nobody was begging Josh Reynolds to be the guy. He was like, hey, they needed him to be a reliable second guy when St. Brown got too much attention or the running game got too much attention or they you know had to double up Laporta or whatever the case may be. So we'll see. I, again, I don't think this is a bad signing at all. I think he's a good player. I think he has a chance to be just a fine replacement for Jerry Judy. I just don't want to – I'm just not going to buy into all the people who are telling me what a great signing this is because prior to today, 99% of the people on my timeline, the only thing they could remember about Josh Reynolds, and they actually didn't remember it was him, you'd have had to remind him, was the drops in the NFC title game, and nobody on March 13th when, when free agency opened – circled him and said that's who the Broncos should go get doesn't mean it's a bad move it doesn't it just doesn't mean hey we need to put this in you know a, a five inch font on the front page of the paper like we just landed on the moon it ain't that all right let's talk about what this may mean for the wide receiver room though because that is the second layer to this that I think is pretty fascinating because if I when I woke up this morning James I would have said 50 50 chance Cortland Sutton's on the Denver Broncos after the NFL draft, I've laid out on several shows on this station why I think Cortland Sutton could be a very important ship for the team to get from the third round to the second round and potentially take a quarterback in the second round or just another better player in the second round. I think Sutton would allow you to move up around on draft night coming off a 10 touchdown year tied fourth in the NFL. Now, James, I'm leaning more towards 70 30. Cortland Sutton is not on the Denver Broncos after the NFL draft, because I think with Reynolds and the high expectations for Mims and the restructured deal with Patrick and the liking Sean has for little Jordan Humphrey, Brandon Johnson catching four touchdowns last year, I think today means Cortland Sutton is a chip on draft night, and I am more convinced than ever. Not not than ever, but like I said, 70% chance Cortland Sutton has played his last snap with the Denver Broncos. You may be right, and they're cleaning house, and I, I think to some extent this is a team that's saying, listen, we got to eat a big chunk of dead cap. We're going to be bad. The only thing worse than being bad is being expensive and bad, mm. right? So you might as well just be, you know, not cheap. I don't want to call them cheap, but why waste money? Just, you know, you can go out there and spend a modest amount, uh, kind of refill the coffers a little bit. You can be bad anyway. Why overspend for that? That that to me is why you get rid of Cortland Sutton. And I'm not going to criticize the Broncos if they do that. But from a strictly football standpoint, we just went through a year in which they had the worst tight end room in the in the league. They would have probably the worst wide receiver room in the league. They would. So if Josh Reynolds is coming in to replace Jerry Judy, that would mean he's opposite Cortland Sutton. That receiver room, if you trade away Cortland, it's Reynolds, it's Mims, who – we all know he's going to be a viable every down receiver. I don't, but okay. Little Jordan Humphrey, Tim Patrick, who hasn't made it past April fi or August 15th, and no fault of his own, but August 15th the last two years, they essentially would be making the same mistake for the third straight year. Two years in a row in training camp with plenty of time to go get somebody else, the Broncos lose Tim Patrick, and they say, we're good enough with 
the the young receiver this year it was Mims before it was KJ or whoever else we're fine with the, some veteran guys we got here Jerry's gonna blossom Cortland's here we're gonna be good they're gonna make that same mistake again I mean how many years in a row do we have to wait for Brandon Johnson to blossom before we just say hey maybe he's the one tulip on the plant that just isn't gonna be all that pretty like I mean come on we're just gonna keep fooling ourselves with this nonsense that these guys are going to develop into really good players year after year after year. They've made that same mistake two years in a row. Now they're going to do it. Instead of do it in August, they're going to make that mistake in March and April. It's just foolish. Foolish. Yeah, but, a football uh, okay, but, but hold on here. Cortland Sutton's not Jerry Rice or Randy Moss or Terrell Owens. Let's, let's pump the brakes a little well, bit he's here. a hell of a lot better than the guys that are in that room. Yeah, but he's is the he, best player in the room by a mile. Is he more valuable as a trade chip to get you up to where you need to get up to get the quarterback you need in the NFL draft? Rather that be, you know, from 12 to 4 if Sutton's in a well, package and it saves you a pick, or if it gets you from the third into the second and you don't go QB in round one, you go Brock Bowers, and then you're using that pick to take Bo Nix or Michael Penix Jr. at the start of round round two. Let's let's Cortland Sutton's not a ring of famer. He's not close to a ring of famer. It. So let's be careful here. I'm not here. saying he is. I'm not saying he is. But if you trade away Cortland Sutton to get chips to get up and draft J.J. McCarthy or whoever you, you want to get, go ahead and sit the kid his rookie year. Let Jarrett Stidham go out there and play with the worst tight end room in the league, the worst wide receiver room in the league, and arguably the worst running back room in the league because we all love Javante Williams' story. And kudos to the kid for getting back out there less than a year after tearing apart his knee. But he was three yards in a cloud of dust as an average this year. They had no running game, no explosiveness out of that that phase of the, uh, of the game. No big plays to speak of. I mean, remind me of the big play Javante Williams made this year. I'm drawing a blank. You're going to put a rookie quarterback out with that? No. Just let Jared Sidham go out and, and and run an offense that's going to average 13 points a game. Wow, that, the rookie, that would be a foolish thing to do with a young quarterback. The rookie QB is not going to learn that much by holding a clipboard. He needs to play. He needs to take He's his He's not going to learn much by playing with that group. Well, at least he gets the experience and he learns Sean's system. And you have to have some success. you got to build upon some success. Yeah, but the clock at least starts on the development as opposed to, hey, just hold a clipboard for a year, watch us go 2-15, and 15, and then we'll try to bring you in weapons. Well, you don't get better at brain surgery without cutting somebody open, but you don't throw someone out there on the first day of med school either. Like, and, and normally I'm with you, play somebody. But you have to surround them with some, some guys to make them successful. Like, Brock Purdy, we can d- disagree on how good of a quarterback he is. I think he's pretty average. I think he'd be r- really exposed if he went to most teams. But when you've got Christian McCaffrey and George Kittle and – Samuel and Ayuk and all the rest of this, like, okay, you're going to look pretty good. The best left tackle in the history of the game, arguably. You're going to do pretty good. How would Brock Purdy do with Adam Troutman, um, Marvin Mims, Josh Reynolds, and Javante Williams with Mike McGlinchey being a turnstile at right tackle? Like, he would be exposed. So that's what you're going to set your rookie quarterback up for. He's going to take a ton of hits. He's going to get gun shy. He's going to start seeing ghosts. Like, I can just see the storylines now. Normally, Will, I am 100% with you. Put a kid out there. It was silly to me that – do you remember the year when um, Bill O'Brien came out of camp and he didn't start Deshaun Watson in the first game of the year, and he switched at halftime because whoever he started was just so – it was just so anemic, and he just put in the kid at halftime of week one. Like, why didn't you just start that way, Bill? It was silly. But if you don't have anything around him and there's no chance of success – I think that's just setting a kid up for failure. Okay. I, I, I see the points you're making, but you're acting like this rookie QB will have a, a totally fine season if he's got Cortland Sutton out there and it's going to no. be a dumpster fire if he doesn't. So, no, it, I, I think it's a dumpster fire either way. I just think it's a, you know, a three-alarm fire without him. It's a two-alarm fire, alarm fire with him. I don't think Cortland Sutton – I think he's the worst, arguably the worst number one wide receiver in the league. I don't think the Broncos had a one last year. I think Jerry, Judy, and Cortland Sutton were competing to see who could be the two in 2024, and you got to go get a one. They didn't today. They didn't. They got a number two guy. Cortland's not a one. Okay, you're going to get rid of him. Fine. Hey, how are you going to replace him? Now you need a one. You need a three. So it's either Tim Patrick, who hasn't played since 2021. It's a rookie who had a handful of catches and couldn't get on the field, essentially, as a, as a offensive player, and a guy who had – what, six catches two years ago and 19 catches last year in Brandon Johnson? Like, man, 
that is just some optimism to think all of all of those things are going to go right. Man, that's hitting a lot of green lights. That's leaving 12 minutes before your flight and thinking you're just going to pass every cop and they're not going to pull you over. You're going to have nothing but green lights, and, man, you're going to make it. Uh, that's just – it could happen. And I guess Sean Payton would call it realistic because it could happen. But I, I just I, – I don't think to count on that would be wise. I, I, I'm just telling you how I, I read the move today. I think the move means that Sutton's done in a Broncos uniform. I think he's you gone. Be, you're probably right. You probably are right. I'm not disagreeing with your read on it. I'm disagreeing – with that decision, you know, we'll see how the whole plan unfolds. But, man, this team, they just keep – we're celebrating lateral moves at this point. That's how bad it's been in this offseason. They've taken so many steps backward that we are now celebrating and getting excited about lateral moves. And we're not even sure it's a lateral move, but I'll just let's just say it is. That's uh, That says something about the state of the Broncos. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good state, and I don't want you to sit here and think I'm mapping the parade route because they signed Josh Reynolds today. But I'm also not going to come on air and say I don't like the move when I like the move, and I think it creates a path to dump another bad contract in Cortland Sutton's, help you move up in the draft, and I think you got Reynolds for two years, $14 million, when Judy just got $51 million from the Browns. So I'm as critical of this team as anyone, but I'm also going to – I'm also going to tell you today, I think the Denver Broncos got better, and I actually think for the first time in a long time, they played a little chess. They got rid of Jerry Judy, and they made a lateral move, and they saved themselves, what is it, $37 million, and they got a guy out of the room who was a bad influence in the room. I think today was an upgrade for the Denver Broncos, by and large, and in an offseason where we don't have a lot of upgrades to talk about, I'll take a win because they've taken L's every single day since free agency opened two and a half weeks ago, and today... They actually took a dub, and that, to me, is worth celebrating. I don't think it's a bad move either, Will. I just am not going to go so far as to say they're playing chess. What we are is we're a bunch of people that just finished a week-long fast, and the first restaurant we come across is Denny's, and we're sprinting through the front door. That's what we're doing. Hey, I'd eat a Grand Slam, man. (laughs) That doesn't sound terrible right now. You certainly would at that point, right? Like, hey, a couple of eggs and a couple of pancakes and some bacon – and a little bit of toast and some OJ and heck, heck throw some hash browns. Of course you would, but it doesn't mean it's the best option you could have found. So I just think that's kind of what Broncos country and, you know, some members of the media are acting like today. I, I don't think it's a bad move. I don't. It's a good addition to the roster. I, I, like I said, the, the wide receiver room is better today than it was yesterday. So therefore, by definition, it's a good move. I just think it's, you know, to what degree. And, and I'm just – until I see more of this plan unfold and to see until I see more of this plan make sense and until I see more of this plan work, I, I'm not even going to say anybody over there's playing checkers, let alone chess. All right. I, I, that's that's your right, my friend. I, I hear what you're saying. They didn't they didn't do something today that makes us think, oh, they're going to beat the Chiefs twice next year. Or they're going to win in the arrowhead for the first time in a decade or anything like that. But it does feel to me. Like, at least they got rid of Judy and they found someone adequate to replace him that I didn't even realize, to your point, was still on the market. So that is a win for me for the Broncos. Let's talk pro days quickly here. They were at Jaden Daniels today from LSU. They are going to Drake May and Michael Penix Jr.'s tomorrow, according to Mike Kliss, our 9 News and 104.3, the fan insider. Of course, that means the contingent's got to get on two different jets. Some will fly all the way across the country to Washington State. Some will make the short trek from New Orleans up there to North Carolina. Obviously, James, they should go to these pro days, of course. But out of the three, Penix, May, and Daniels, is there one of those that you think maybe they are honing in on this guy? I heard Troy Ranks say on the drive an hour ago that he thinks McCarthy may be more of a smokescreen than anything at this point, and Daniels could be the target all along, and he could fall all the way to four, and that's where they were today down there in Baton Rouge. Well, listen, if they can trade up to four to get Jaden Daniels, sign me up for it. We've debated round and round of you know making that move and, and trading away a couple first-round picks to get to four to take J.J. McCarthy. I think that's, I think that's lunacy. But if you can do that to get Jaden Daniels because somebody ahead of four fell in love with J.J., great. Go for it. I- I'm all in on that. So you got to go to that one. I would skip Drake May. I, I just – somebody's tumbling like that. That's concerning. I think Michael Penix Jr. is still fascinating. And I know he had a bad game in the national title game. 
But, man, do we not remember the week leading up to that, how high everybody was on that guy? And the way he played, what was it, Texas that they played in the, in the semifinal game? And the way he played in that game and the season he had of, like, man, that guy's stock has tumbled and he's a realistic option. To me, the best case scenario for the Broncos is you get Brock Bowers in round one and you find a way to get wherever you need to get to my, get Michael Penix Jr. in round two. Now, all of a sudden, you got something to work with. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, you, you got, and you may have given away Cortland, but let's just play the hypothetical. You got Josh Reynolds and Cortland Sutton. You got Brock Bowers. You got Michael Penix Jr. And you got Javante Williams. Well, all of a sudden, that sounds okay. And I, I would throw are, Marvin Mims Jr. in that conversation. I yeah, would, Yeah, not James. all of them are yeah. A-pluses, but not everybody's going to be the Niners, right? Like, you got to, you know, make hay with, with some guys that are, you know, B-plus, C-minus, C, you know, whatever the case may be. But um, I, that would be better to me because you're getting two guys. Like, I think Michael Penix Jr. has just as good a chance to be a really good pro as Drake May or J.J. McCarthy. So I'll take the value. I'll take Brock Bowers at 12 and then do what I have to do to get to, to get back in there to get Penix. We are on YouTube at Denver Sports. If you could look us up and maybe like a video, leave a comment, share a video, or most importantly, subscribe. We would really appreciate it.